This is the Saima CM032A. Or is it an M14? Or is this the M18? Or is it the Sokum 16? What is this thing? Hey, it's Airsoft Mike. Welcome back to my channel. And today it's another episode of Airsoft on a Budget. Oh, I love an unboxing. Nice. So what do we get in the box? As always, we start with the user manual. Yeah, there's a lot of um, Chinese going on here, but look, there's English. Oh cool, and that shows you the different variants you can get in Airsoft from Saima. Okay, let's get rid of the rubbish first. Free bag of BBs, goodbye. Sling, goodbye. Generic charger, goodbye. And now we're left with the good stuff. One thing I would like to point out, yes, you get a battery pack, but they are now shipping these specifically in Europe. I'm not sure about America, Canada, and elsewhere but they now ship them with these standard 8.4 volt battery packs because I think before they were shipping them with NICADs so it's good that they're now shipping them with these. So you get a tiny little Allen key and another type of key and this one you would use to wind the mag even though you've got a wheel on the bottom to do that. So yeah, you also get a high cap mag and we get to the main piece itself. Oh wow. Oh and look, you have an unjamming rod, which also doubles up as your cleaning rod. Right, let's clear one or two things up. Now, at first sight, you would be forgiven for thinking this is definitely the Sokum 16. Well, yeah, it pretty much is the Sokum 16. In the real steel world, it would say Sokum 16 somewhere around here. However, this has a fire selector switch. And just like the Sokum 16, this has a shorter barrel. And apart from that, pretty much everything else on here is the M14 or the Sokum 16. And when I first saw this online, I just absolutely fell in love with this beast. And I couldn't work out, why am I so attracted to this? What is it about this? that made me automatically think I have to have one in my collection. And then the penny dropped. Look, look, look. It's like father and son. This is my much loved M1 Garand. Look how identical they both look around this area. Pretty much the same iron sights. Now it is said that this right here or the M14 in general it's supposed to have been an improvement to this M1 Garand. However, in my eyes, and I repeat, in my eyes, there's no such thing as an improvement to the M1 Garand because it's a beauty. It's in a class of its own. But yeah, technically, M14 is supposed to be an improvement because your box mag. And in the case of this particular model, it's a lot more compact compared to the M1. Okay, so let's go over all of the basic features you would expect to find on this particular model, obviously concentrating on the airsoft aspect of this piece. You've got a full metal butt plate, but this isn't any old butt plate. Just like its real steel counterpart, it flips up. And in the real world, that would be quite handy because this will help to stabilize this gun when using it. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's a shoulder rest. Now in this review, do expect a lot of M1 Garand comparisons, okay? Just like the M1, there's a little door. In the real world, you would store your cleaning tools. But in Airsoft, it's your battery compartment. There's your small Tamiya and your fuse. So once your battery is fully charged, pop it in this so-so mm, generous battery compartment 
Now, the reason why I say so-so is because, yes, you can fit your battery pack in there, but you've still got to get your Tamiya connections and your big old fuse and fuse case. Actually, it's not too bad at all. Okay, so the battery has been installed now for the sake of safety. Yes, the mag is in. There are no BBs in this. It is powered up now, but it is on safe. So, as we move along from the butt pad, we get to your first sling point, your rear sling point, and yet again, this reminds me of the M1. They're even angled exactly the same. <laughs> awesome. And then we move along to the actual main body of the stock right here. It's a very durable, textured feel to it. Very nice. And you've even got a bit of I don't know, what's that, diamond or checkered look to it? I would say that's more sort of a diamond effect uh, grip right here, which is good. And of course, it's on the other side. Okay, so now let's move to the trigger. Again, look, can you see the similarities, especially with the safety switch? And as mentioned before, right now it's in safe. Pushing it forward, it's in fire mode. And now we move to the fire selector switch. Now this particular fire selector switch it's got a little play in it. It feels fairly firm, but the way it's designed, how it sits on this particular piece, I would be careful not to knock it on the edge of something because it might just pop off. However, to have this in full auto, it needs to be in the position it is right now. For semi-auto, you simply switch it down so that this lip thing right here is pointing downwards. Shall we have a quick test? Yes. I'm going to dry fire this thing just for your benefit. So, semi-auto, let's have a listen. Nice. Let's put this in full auto. Ooh. But because of its internals, you can slap a LiPo in there and an even higher voltage battery pack. Right, so let's move on to your rear sight. Again, look. So just like it's daddy, <laughs> you can adjust this for windage and elevation. So for your windage, you simply turn this and you will see, let me just show it to you so you can actually see this in motion. You will see that this moves from side to side and you would use this side to adjust your elevation. Oh, I love that. So sticking to this area of this, um, let's get to the charging handle, the bolt action. I absolutely love it. Yes, it's a mock bolt, so it doesn't really put anything into the chamber. It's just done so it looks like the real steel. So, have a listen. Oh, but apart from sounding quite nice, have a look right here at what happens to the bolt when I rack it back, just like my ICS M1 Garand. Here we go. Check the bolt and how it starts to rotate. Oh, did you see that? Let's go again. It does that initial little rotation, just like its real steel counterpart. But that's not all. You see this right here? Absolutely love this. If I pull back the charging handle and I press this, the bolt locks open and to release it, nice. So just when you thought I'm finished with this portion right here, no, I've got at least two more things to show you. Like look, right there is where you would use a stripper clip. In the real world, for Airsoft, it's here just for looks. And on this side, you see that hole right there? That's there so you can put a rail system. Even though there's one here, you can put one right here. And I'll get to this rail system in a moment and why I don't like it. <laughs> okay, so let's look underneath this thing. Right here, it tells you it's made in China. And it's hop-up adjustable. And if you look right here, you have that very familiar looking paddle. Doesn't it remind you of an AK? It's the same sort of principle. To get the mag out, you simply do that and it's out. And if we look in the mag well, you can see where the BBs are fed. Of course, you wanna always make sure you insert your mag correctly. 
Now, unlike many other mock bolt or charging handles, your hop-up adjustment isn't down there somewhere. It's underneath here. It's right there. Now, before you think, hold on, that's a bit odd having it there. And if you've got the mag in, you can't get to it. Well, you can. If I pop the mag back in and then show you underneath yet again, look, you've got plenty of room to get your finger underneath there to adjust your hop-up. So sticking to this area, you have your full metal mag. It's a high cap mag. Now, if you go to certain websites, they will say this has a mag capacity of about 370, some say 400, some say up to 470. I'm just gonna say, you're pretty much gonna get around 400 plus BBs in this mag. And of course, once you have your BBs, in this mag, you would use this wheel right here to wind them up so that they go right up into the feeding position. So as we move along this fine looking piece, let me just remind you that this entire section from here, all the way along here, right the way to the front right here, is a strong, durable polymer. However, along here seems to be a lighter form of polymer or a lighter form of plastic. But it's still very durable and doesn't feel cheap at all. Trust me, if it did, I would tell you. So that of course leaves everything else, including this butt plate, trigger guard, trigger, safety, your paddle, your magazine, the entire bolt assembly, your sights, this front rail, your sling points, your barrels is metal. Now let's get back <laughs> to this rail system. It looks cool, but when you get a sight or a scope on it, I don't know, it just looks a bit odd. Having a sight or any form of scope or aiming device all the way up the front here looks really odd to me. But you know what? It doesn't really matter because like I said, you can have a rail system right here. Oh, and just another little minor point I'd like to show you. You see this band right here? Even though this section here is not metal, the band is. Right, as I bring you towards the business end, you've got your front adjustable sight and your very cool looking muzzle brake. And of course, your front sling point. I'll tell you what, overall, I absolutely love this thing. Yes, this is Airsoft on a budget, but the feel, the quality of it suggests something different. It really is built to some form of high standard and I'm quite shocked. I expected it to be a lot more plasticky feeling and very cheaply built. But if you want to skirmish with this in airsoft gameplay, is it any good? Now there's a question for you. Now, before I take it to the range, let me just show you this thing even closer in even more detail. And I'm going to show you an image of the real steel and you will see how close they are in looks. But do remember, the real steel that I'm about to show you doesn't have that fire selector switch. It's just this Airsoft version. And here we go, look. This is the real steel M1A Socom 16 by Springfield. And now back to the Airsoft version.
And just for effect. <laughs> so let's keep this nice and simple. As you can see up there, you have three types of targets. One for sniper, one for pistol, and the one I'm using today for the rifle. I'll use these three for semi-auto and these three for full auto. Take note of the weight of BBs and my distance. And <laughs> how small these targets are. This is the little label that you saw me tear off earlier. Just gives you an idea of how small that target is. Let's quickly analyze my results. So using semi-auto only, as you can see there, my first shot was off target. Again, this is very small, but my second shot, almost bullseye. Okay, so my second of the three targets, as you can see there, there's a trend happening. My first shot, off target. My second one, much better. And then the third target right here, much better results. As you can see, there's one shot, just within the boundary, and one oh so close to that bullseye. Okay, so as we move to my full auto results, it speaks for itself. Nice. Let's chrono this thing. So as you can see there on semi-auto single shots, we are looking at about an average of 380 FPS. In some countries, that's a little too hot. In many other countries, mm, that's just right. And there you go. Full auto, we're looking at around 365 to 370 FPS, the final reading being 368.5, which is just within the UK legal limit in law, which is good. <laughs> However, for gameplay, it's a few FPS limits over for actual gameplay in the UK. Other countries have higher FPS limits, or some don't even have any FPS limits. <laughs> but over here, in UK law, 370 FPS for full auto, and it's 520 FPS for single shots, semi-auto. But again, do remember, wherever you buy your airsoft guns from, make sure they are within the legal limits of your country. And if the website is saying it's higher than what your law permits, ask them for a downgrade service. Most of them will do it for free. It will just take a little longer to be delivered to you. Okay, let me empty the mag and what I'll do is I'll try and draw a line right the way across first. Okay, here we go. Absolutely awesome! So, what's my final verdict on this beautiful looking Saima CM032A? Well, I have to be honest with you, I love this thing. For the price, 
It's a pretty neat package. As I've mentioned, it's very sturdy, not rickety and rattly or anything like that. It's got a very good weight to it and it definitely qualifies as being part of my Airsoft on a budget. Because if you were, for example, to get the Tokyo Marui version of this, you would be looking at paying anything between 350 to 400 dollars. Similar prices in pounds. But this bad boy right here, it averages around 130 dollars. 130 dollars for this is absolutely awesome. Now I know obviously Tokyo Marui is said to be a much higher quality M14 if you like, but the Saima version, which is a budget version, is awesome. The build in it is great and I have shot and held the Tokyo Marui version, went to my local Airsoft store about two years ago and had a play with one of them. Very nice, but I'm telling you now, you get a lot of bang for your buck if you get this one right here. So, all there is left for me to tell you are my pros and cons, and then I'm out of here. Okay, so let's start with the cons. I don't like the rate of fire. It is so slow. <laughs> but all is not lost. This thing is very upgradable and is compatible with many Tokyo Marui parts. So, all is not lost, but I would have preferred a higher rate of fire out of the box. Anyway, what else? Another con, it would have been so cool if it did have some form of trades, okay? Even if it's not the official trades, just something somewhere. The only form of inscription or stamp on this bad boy is the Made in China, which is beneath the trigger guard. Ha, <laughs> no good. And you know what? Pretty much, that's it. Everything else for me are pros, 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 which I've already mentioned throughout the video. Check the video description below if you'd like to pick yourself up one of these bad boys. I have a list of retailers and various different price points, including euros, dollars and pounds.